This is Wandering Universe. Today, I'll be exploring a one-of-a-kind ruin features an exclusive technology that was not known to our ancestral past. A ruin so different and unusual, you would have to see it to believe it for yourself. I know I would. It's nestled in the tranquil Olive Grove Valley, complete with an idyllic country setting for you to enjoy a morning stroll. Along the way, you will come across this ancient ruin tagged with a saintly name. So, let's go exploring. You are now watching Wandering Universe. Yes, a program that looks at the great mysteries of the world. And as you can see, that's what you're seeing in front of you, the world. Where are we going today? Let me spin this big blue marble around, shall we? Okay, let's have a look. This is where we're going today. No, we're not going to the giant jigsaw puzzle of Europe, even though it's under the flag of the EU. That is irrelevant. Where we're going today, we're going to the big long boot, the big long winter boot, as I call it, Italy. Yes, home of Italian pasta like spaghetti bolognese, lasagna, linguine, orichetti, and all other interesting dishes that this country has to offer to the world. Yes. So, we're not going to explore Rome, and we're not going to explore Italy itself, this lovely long winter boot. Nope. Where we're going today, we're going to Sardinia. As you can see, Sardinia has the Southern Ireland and the Northern Ireland, similar geography to like that of New Zealand. To get across from Rome, it's quite easy. It's either a plane ride away or a ferry ride away. To get across is very easy. You just have to pick the right time of day to go. Sometimes the seas can be calm. Sometimes the seas can be rough and uneven. And it depends where you're crossing to, whether you're going to go to Sicily or you're going to go to Sardinia. Sometimes the waters can be rough and uneven and turbulent at times, depending if it's a bad day. But it's if it's a good summer's day, the waters can be very calm. So it can be a very pleasant ride to get to Sardinia. All right, where are we going today? We're going somewhere very interesting. And as you see, I'm just going to show you something before we get to Sardinia. Take a look at this. See this little worm of a tunnel right here carved out in this underwater landmass? I wonder what that is. Must have been something a long time ago. And as you can see, there's a lot of mountains submerged there. How interesting. I wonder what's down there. Be interesting to explore. All right. Here we go. Not far off the coast of southern Italy. We're going into this area today. What's in this area? Well, come with me. You're going to find out right now. Within this area, there's an ancient archaeological ruin that has been recently discovered some time ago. A very interesting ruin. It's nestled within the wine and olive grove country. And while you're out there exploring the tastes of different wines, you're going to see something really interesting. So come on in, come and have a look with me. You'll see what it is. Yep, this is it. I know, unusual, isn't it? A very strange-looking ancient ruin. As you can see, it looks like a keyhole with a pyramid. It's like as if you're sloshing a key inside this hole, opening a door to another dimension, like the Twilight Zone. But this isn't a Twilight Zone episode. Nestled in the Olive Grove country region, so while you're strolling, there's also another ancient ruin here. Recently, they have discovered other ancient ruins, but not like the one in Santa Cristina. I'm not sure why it was uh, named after a saint, but I'm sure they have their reasons. Just off the highway, 
And what's interesting about this ancient ruin, I'll just zoom out a bit. It's in the mountain ranges and it's not far from this river system right here. So it would have supplied water to this ancient well or this tiny reservoir all year round. Some archaeologists say that the Noragic people built this well. I beg to differ. As you can see, there are, there's an ancient settlement just in circumference around this ruin. And as I go in a little bit closer, there's a fenced barrier that protects the structure within. And that's all I have to say about this. So let's have a nice view of this ancient structure. So I'm going to just turn it around and there you have it. Enjoy. So there you have it. That's what it looks like from the air from this satellite image. I'm going to leave it as it is so you can have a little bit of a inspection for yourself. And yes, it's there's a pyramid shape keyhole um, embedded within this ancient ruin. And why? Well, you're going to find out in this video. Let's enjoy exploring this unusual, bizarre ancient wonder. Enjoy. Not far from the Italian peninsula is a neighbouring island called Sardinia. This island inhabits some of the most breathtaking ancient ruins unsighted in the history books on the Roman Empire. Unique in structure and character, you would mistaken it for an Egyptian edifice. This extraordinary Bronze Age ruin was built during the Nuragi or Nurhag period out in the middle of an olive grove. It is called the Nuraic Holy Well or the Holy Well of Santa Cristina. The actual age is uncertain, yet it is estimated to be between 1900 and 730 BC. The riddle to this mystery remains unknown. The quality of work is surprisingly special crafted from basalt rock and sits on the basaltic plateau near Polylatino. During the Bronze Age, the Nuragic people happily made a home for themselves until they came across this ruin. At first, archaeologists assume they built it as a religious sanctuary with offerings of worship to their invisible entities. Encompassing the keyhole-shaped well are several abandoned stone settlements and further away is another ancient cyclopic stone relic. Archaeologists hypothesize the Nuraikic civilization evolved through the use of bronze tools to produce sophisticated structures. As for the holy well of Santa Cristina, it may have been a symbolic gesture for them to descend through the gates into the underworld. Nowhere on earth is there any other relic that even comes close to its eccentric design. The well of Santa Cristina certainly adds luster to its stoneware design. Its exquisite craftsmanship goes hand in hand with its handsome features. This antiquated chamber of secrets has no correlation to the fictional philosopher's stone and don't even try. This in-ground pyramid shines its spotlight on its age-old engineering, superseding most Roman ruins scattered across Italy. So 
Let's immerse ourselves into this exotic expedition, commencing with a guided tour, surveying its ancient architecture. The outer and inner structure is made out of basalt stone. Remarkably well preserved, it features its own geometric composition, developed from old world technology that was ahead of its time. On the outside, there is an oval shaped barrier called a themenos. Roughly configured from coarse stones, is safeguarding an unusual object of advanced design the in-ground pyramid. Within this barrier is a second enclosure shaped like a keyhole pattern is called a profane wall. This would have ignited the Nuraikic people's imagination, make-believing it was the doorway into a fantastic journey to a celestial heaven. Both barricades look well proportioned from afar. Upon closer view, the stacked coarse stones look cluttered and uneven. From above the stone keyhole is a rock pile formed in a circle with a protruding peephole. This perfectly symmetrical hole is approximately 35 centimeters in diameter and pebbled by several large stones. This elliptical shape is measured at 26 meters by 20 meters that serves as a ceiling enclosure. Then further down is the inviting trapezoidal shaped relic called the in-ground pyramid. Just less than 50 meters from the entrance is a paved path facing directly to the main entrance. It makes an enticing invitation for anyone daring enough to journey into the underworld. From the main entrance is a stone staircase descending down to a two-ring circular basin. Every step was crafted with absolute rigour, straight lines at right angles forming rectangular and square blocks. The staircase consists of 24 steps that proceeds with each architrave. Each architrave is cut to a precise uniform measure panelling along the staircase, giving the impression of an abstract effect. At the final step, there is a cylindrical brick-lined cavity known as Theolos Hypogym Chamber. The alcove shows meticulously laid bricks sealed with machine-like precision. Peering from above is the peephole confined by a tiled Ogreville dome. Each tile has a polished surface fitted together in perfect unison without mortar or cement. The hollow dome reverberates audible sounds bouncing off the echo chamber walls. From this hole, a single ray of sunlight peers through reflecting off the water's surface. The well itself is filled to a precise level of 50 centimetres. Archaeologists have determined that at a particular time of the year, light reflected from the moon and the sun projects an image onto the wall. This ingenious feat of engineering could not have been accomplished by the Nuraigic people. The entire structure demonstrates geometric composition that could not have resulted from the use of bronze tools. Although archaeologists have evaluated it was made around 1000 BC, others speculate it was created far earlier. During our ancient ancestral past, we came, we saw, and we renovated a piece of ancient history and turned it into a shrine of remembrance to please our gods. Yet, do not mistaken it for a shrine. As most archaeologists will put it, it's a water source of some kind for accessible drinking water. But it's far from it. Hugh from Megalithomania took a stroll one fine morning down a dirt lane looking for something to do.
They were just on top of the Santa Cristina well. This is amazing. This is like a Bronze Age masterpiece that goes deep into the ground, perfectly cut volcanic basalt rock. This is on par with ancient Peru, ancient Egypt, and you know, 1100 BC, this is very, very impressive. It was part of the neuralgic village, which is just, you know, a quarter of a mile away. And it just shows you the sophistication that they really have. But you can see behind me as I go down, what the precision stonework we're dealing with here. It's really quite amazing. All the way up, all the steps, all the beautiful walls. It's absolutely amazing. And just down here, we have the circular pool. So we're just inside the famous well at Santa Cristina here in Sardinia. You can just see the amazing stonework behind me, the depth that goes down to it. And just above me there, you can just see the way this stonework is put together. It's really quite amazing. And beneath me here is the, there's a round pool and there's a hole above there. And it's perfectly circular kind of corbel roof chamber that goes out and goes straight up to like the midday sun. So it's really, you get like this natural light in here as well. It's also aligned north, northwest, south, south, east. So this is pretty much uh, aligning to the winter solstice sunrise or just off it. So it could be actually the light comes in at different times of the year and actually illuminates the chamber. And apparently during the winter months, the moonlight actually comes in and creates these different um, sort of magical light effects. If it was a water source for the supplement of fresh drinking water year round, then why was it built with technical specification? If a light source reflects the surface of the pool, then those steps contributed to the spectrum of mass beamed from the sunlight. The brickwork is in the detail. The seams show no gaps, no air, no water seepage, no mould, nothing. Tight as a snare drum. And the well never dries up. Ever. So, what's it there for, you might be asking? Well, let's take a look. Lined on the outer edge of the in-ground pyramid are a row of decorated stones patched along three sides. These stones were carved not by hand as they appear too well defined, but possibly stenciled by a tracing device moulding them in a uniform pattern. From the top leading down to the bottom step, this staircase exhibits straight line cuts. Although the eroded edges have worn down its precision, they still remain perfectly intact. Along each side of the staircase are polygonal shaped brick blocks. Most of the bricks are overlaid by half a centimetre, spanning to the ceiling. Each brick is carefully layered, sealed airtight. A preventative measure from water leakage, mould and mildew. Every brick exhibits meticulous configuration shown along the seams, complete with a smooth matte finish. Attention to detail was paramount. The cylindrical sphere fashioned an echo chamber that orchestrates an array of sounds. Complemented by the basalt well, moulded by two rings, a large outer ring and one small inner ring. During the winter equinox, heavy rain causes a trickle of water cascading down from a small opening rising to 50 centimetres from the outer ring and half the level within the inner ring during the summer solstice. The brickwork within the echo chamber and the in-ground pyramid speaks of master builders derived from an unknown origin. The architecture shows commitment to excellence that prides itself in perfection superseding our modern building standards. Until now, the aspiration for its conception has not yet fully come to light its secret technology. 
From recent archaeological studies, they surmise it may have been an astrophysics observatory acquiring celestial insights into our Milky Way. I guess inspecting this reservoir is like investigating a homicide. Every puzzling piece of a murder case always comes with a clue. But it's like finding a needle in a haystack that takes away the fun out of pinpointing the true suspect. To add a bit of spice into your mental diet, it coincides with the yearly seasonal changes, along with the movements of the sun and moon cycles. So we really have to ask who these Naraji people really were. They were building these great circular monuments, much like the Chulpas of ancient Peru and Bolivia, or the Round Towers of Britain, or many other temple sites similar like that around the world. But when you come into here, the Santa Cristina well, you see another level of sophistication. We see this intricate stonework, and I've described it, and I've shown you polygonal pieces. But this really is something special and it just shows you the high level of sophistication that some of these Naraji people were able to produce. I mean, we saw, um, we've seen many of the sites, the Neolithic sites, we've seen the giant's graves, we've seen some Naraji towers and other such things, but none have this incredible precision. However, we are seeing some tomorrow, some earlier sites, which Again, these are like chambers, hypergeums cut out of solid bedrock, which show very high levels of sophistication, including spiral carvings as well. And so we have to question who were they? If this was a later culture, were they perhaps influenced by the earlier culture? Did the earlier culture teach them? Was, has this got anything to do with these giant remains and these stories that echo throughout Sardinia? Or is there something else going on here that's yet to be discovered? A water source, they say. It's illogical to make it a justifiable theory. All clues lead to a brought over technology that was introduced to the Nuragic settlers. As soon as it was abandoned, the Nuragic people were left stumped on how to operate it. I suppose the settlers needed something to quench their thirst. But for argument's sake, let's say it was a water well, some kind of reservoir leaving out an important clue, the hole in the dome. Drilled to precision, letting in a single ray of light, magically cascade down to the water for no apparent reason. But aside from that crazy thought, we should look at its architecture that truly speaks for itself. The function of this pyramidal architecture ranges from sound harmonics that transcend good vibrations to a celestial measure of time. It operates based on seasonal equinoxes calculated precisely to the celestial motions. Thus, the single ray of light illuminated from the moonlight through the hole creates a shadow image of oneself projected in the chamber. This generates accurate cycles around every 18 years and 6 months. When the moon reaches its maximum height, it orients from north-northwest to south-southeast. On September 21st to 23rd at 12pm and from March 18th to 21st at 11am, the sun's rays illuminate on the water acting like a mirror. On the sixth step, a mirror image projects two shadows refracting the water aided by the Theolos chamber walls, creating an upside-down image. Supposedly, the water level remains steady during the celestial calendar. As a consequence, construction of a drainage channel during the excavation campaign cause the water to be uneven. The architecture within the in-ground pyramid chamber shares a design correlation of the Khufu Pyramid's Grand Gallery. Whether this design element was a contributing functionality of the pyramids remains unclear. However, the idea that these chambers containing water wells 
channeled by a subterranean tunnel system may be possible. This is not the only antiquated water structure in Italy. There are more of them popping up all over Sardinia. Well, 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 the answer lies within the confines of the structure itself. You could debate me till the cows come home. I would think it was a builder's model, a prototype that was franchised across the River Nile. Sure, it looks complicated every which way you look, but I find it's a lot more to it than you think. Have you noticed something? There is not one hieroglyph engraved along the smooth brick walls. Not one inscription printed in stone, inside and out. Nothing points to a burial tomb, religious rites of passage for the afterlife, a royal elite hall pass to the heavens. So, what could it be? What I'm about to say may leave you feeling deeply perplexed. It's a device that I am using right now, except the reversed image is upright. A camera obscura? Could be. It stands to reason why there is a hole in the dome, as it wasn't placed there as a cute decoration. So, it's highly implausible the Nuragic people were recognised scientists in the understanding of electromagnetic radiation or visible light. But it doesn't take Einstein's string theory to work this one out. In conclusion, this might have been the world's first motion picture camera of the last Ice Age silent film era. The Holy Well of Santa Cristina takes the prize for the most eccentric Ingram pyramidal construction. The ideal setting gave the master builders the opportunity to start a new lease on life at a suitable location. This work of art speaks volumes on its highly refined construction that took a level of sophistication and dedication that goes beyond impeccable. Attention to detail explicitly addresses every geometric matter that brought forth a timeless classic of engineering finesse. This structure is the work of ancient high technology that evolved long before humans discovered a set square and a compass. It is not alone. It is accompanied by many others scattered across the Sardinian plains, unearthed and cross-examined for its unusual makeover. This in-ground pyramid is the only masterpiece of ingenuity that has marvelled even the most sceptical archaeologist. History has a way of repeating itself through us humans immortalising ourselves as brilliant creatures of habit. We are the masters of destroying our own lives and others simply by repeatedly making the same stupid mistakes. Instead of being accountable, we pass it on to a centralised power-hungry figure in the hopes it will be taken care of. This ancient ruin did no such thing and should serve as a reminder that chasing after broken promises will never bring forth a better way of living. The only way us humans can achieve greatness is to do the one simple thing that the ancient beings gifted us that we've been evading the most. Facing the void inside. In the next video, I'll be going into the heart of Africa, exploring a place less known to Western travellers, 
housing bizarre decorated stone building blocks not suitable for unfit adults to put back together again. That's all for now.